Now in today's video we're going to have a look at how to control aphids. We are in a tunnel at the moment. This is kohlrabi growing, going to seed for seed saving. Um, of course in a tunnel aphids are going to be way more of a problem, especially if you have a kind of a huge patch of uh, food for the aphids to feed on. Uh, they tend to multiply, but it also means that you can use uh, natural control methods to actually keep them in check. So you could add things like ladybirds and so on. So we're going to talk about aphids now and how to control them today. Now, first of all, these are aphids. These are the green ones. You also get them in grey and some other colours, I'm sure, as well. Um, I've only ever seen the green and the grey ones. And they differentiate as well, of course, between uh, that the green ones tend to um, hide very well and spread out over the entire crop much more, whereas the grey ones are much easier to kind of spot because they kind of lump up. I'll show you an example now in a minute. Um, but you can see here, just under there, these are then the aphids and if left unchecked these would grow in masses of population within even just one day. So the important factor here is that we have to try and get them early. Now one thing you will find always with aphids is that there's always going to be some ants in the vicinity and that's because they farm um, the aphids pretty much like unfortunately how we farm uh, cattle, they basically even put, these ants would even put aphids onto the, the leaves themselves, bringing them up there and causing pretty much a big problem for us as well. Now ants first of all are a wonderful thing for the soil, for the garden. You shouldn't get rid of them if, they're, if it's only a small problem like here, this is not a big major problem, we can just keep them. But if you have lots and lots of ants in your garden, then one method is using cinnamon, they don't tend to like that. Cinnamon essential oil, for instance, you can get that. Uh, peppermint oil, just anything to disrupt the, the, the smell and the pathways. And if you have a really, really serious problem, then the only method that is natural to kill them, unfortunately, would be to um, put several applications of borax mixture. It's the kind of stuff you would actually use for potatoes, putting on potatoes. And um, you actually mix that with sugar. And you do that for a couple of weeks and then your ant problem tends to be gone. Okay, so we're going to have a look at what kind of natural uh, remedies, if you like, we can actually spray onto aphids to, in order to kill them. I kind, of, I kind of always feel a little bit bad about killing things, but at the end of the day, if we don't kill the aphids off our plants, we're going to have um, serious, serious problems and our plants will uh, all die and we won't be able to eat or save seeds. So... There's always two things that you're going to have to add, and one is going to be a poison, if you like. Um, and the other thing is a, thing, a mixture of soap and oil. And the soap and oil mixture would actually be used in order to kind of make it more sticky, so make the kind of poison more sticky to the aphids, but it also kind of clogs up the kind of breathing apparatus as well. So the soap and oil mixture is great for that. Now you can either use a, a kind of a shop bought kind of product, here we have Quasia bag, that's one thing you can order, you can also order a neem, that's another great thing that you can use, or if you, if you have garlic and cayenne pepper actually at home in your cupboard, you can actually make an extract and that's a very simple way, you just make a kind of infusion like a tea and then you kind of siphon it all off and uh, through a sieve and then you would add it to uh, a bottle like this. So you make a, a cup of tea, a strong cup of tea, stick it in there, uh, put about three tablespoons of soap, three tablespoons of uh, oil. Now the soap can be a kind of a biodegradable kind of soap that you buy in a shop and the oil can be any kind of sunflower oil or uh, olive oil or anything like that. And that's pretty much it. If you want to apply it, you can, if you have a large area, you can of course use one of these um, big kind of sprayers, they have an induction motor on there, really great for really blasting the stuff out there. So you have a lot of quick coverage and you, you're really ensured, you're assured that it actually really gets in there. Most people actually probably will only need something like this. Um, you know, it's just one of those pumpy ones. Or if you have a kind of medium area that you have, uh, then a knapsack sprayer also works fine. Now one thing I forgot to mention, and, and this is actually, I, I want to stress this point because it's very important, you have to create outside and inside some kind of um, natural kind of places where predatory insects can actually live. So sometimes 
like keeping some aphids on plants that don't matter it's very important because um, your natural predatory insects need to multiply as well so they need some form of some, some amount of aphids in order for them to actually survive so uh, make sure to create kind of natural habitats for them you can do insect hotels um, you can even order online especially if you're in the tunnel for instance you can order online these um, predatory wasps they're tiny wasps that will lay an egg into an aphid and that will kill the aphids as well so there's plenty of natural systems in fact the, the bigger your natural ecosystem is the less likely it is that you have problems so if you have a 50 60 acre farm that is completely uh, organically certified and has plenty of kind of fruit bushes and different kind of mini climates and ecosystems it's going to do a lot better than actually spraying or picking up aphids and kind of dealing with the, the symptoms rather than um, the actual cause and the problem. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.